Buckle up, Buttercup, because we are getting ready to do the third installment in the 2023 Best in Beauty. This time it is face, cheeks, so we're talking blush, bronzer, highlighter, foundation, concealer, powder, all the good things. And then I have a couple of surprises for you that I'm throwing in here as well. I'm so excited to be able to do this. So let's get right into it. But don't forget that we have a numbering system on my channel. The number comes up on the screen that corresponds to the product that I am holding up. Then all you have to do is remember that you liked number three. You go down into the description box. You look for number three. Next to it will be the product color, the name, the name of the product, the color, and the link if you'd like to shop that way. It seems to be a lot easier for everyone. I don't always go for one high-end, one drugstore. There's a huge mix of both in here. I tend to gravitate towards drugstore because I think that the price point is fabulous and prices are getting up there, so I get it. But at the same time, when it's good, it's good. And there are times to splurge, which you'll see in here a couple of things. I also wanna tell you that my sweater, my jewelry, my fingernails, which are press-ons, my makeup, everything will be listed and linked down below for you so that you can see that. Let's get started. Let's start with something I was really excited to talk to you about. Now, Koki, they've had this out for a long time, but I didn't know anything about it. When you get a foundation that is too matte or it's too dewy, don't you just get so frustrated because you're like, if that was just a little bit more dewy or a little bit more satin, or if that was just a little bit more matte, it would be perfect. And I'm gonna talk about color in just a second, but if you want to tr transform your foundation to for it to be more dewy or more matte, they have these mixers in there. This one is dewy, they have a matte one. They work like a dream. They are that good. And they give you this big, huge tube, which I don't know if I'll ever go through, but this is really good. And if you're looking for something to save your foundation that you spent so much money on, you definitely can fix your foundations. And this is the first step if you need to change the consistency of it. But also I've talked about so many times on my channel that you can fix the color of a foundation by mixing in different pigments. And I have two here and Inevitably, when I pick up a foundation, it's either going to be too dark or it's going to be too orange or too yellow. And so you can fix the orange or yellow part by picking up a blue mixer, or and you can fix the dark by picking up the white. Now, if you need it to be darker, I wish that I had something like a black or something, but they haven't come out with that that I know of. So if you know of anything like that, let us all know in the comment section. But these are from DeRoll, and I like these a little bit better than I liked the ones that are the LA Girl. I still love those, I still use them, I'm using up what I have, but I found these and I wanted to tell you about them because they have a little bit thinner of a consistency. The ones from LA Girl can be a little bit thicker, and if you like a thinner consistency on your foundation, that kind of you know messes up that little bit of a consistency part on there. These don't. These will still stay very thin. They're very lightweight. They mix in like a dream, and you need so very little because they're highly pigmented. So I wanted to tell you about these as well. Now let's talk about foundation. And you're gonna all boo and hiss at me, but guess what? I only have two high-end foundations. Now that is not because I don't love drugstore, and I am going to do my favorite foundations at the drugstore because I did just get asked about that. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm going to do that. But if any of you have a new drugstore one that you really love that came out this year, please tell us all about it. Now, the two that came out, the Stick Foundation from Fenty Beauty and the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech foundation. Both of these are beautiful. Now I have the House Labs on, one on today. I love this foundation from House Labs because it has something like nine or more different silicones in it. Now you would think that that would make texture on a mature person's skin. It doesn't. It actually does the opposite. It makes your skin look so smooth and so flawless because it has all of those characteristics in there that are smoothing. Just like you put a silicone primer on to smooth out the pores, like putty on a piece of sheetrock, that's kind of what this does. It's just so pretty. It's a beautiful foundation. I get great wear time out of it. It's got a medium consistency so I can build it up and put one more coat on and get a high coverage out of it. But you can definitely sheer it out if you want to as well, if you need it a little bit sheer. So it's really a really in the middle as far as consistency and coverage. And I love that about it. Wear time is fantastic for me. 
I do have to set it down with a little bit of powder and setting spray. The star though that came out this year that I was so impressed with is this Fenty Beauty Stick Foundation. Now I know and it, it gripes me too that it's not as cost effective to buy these stick foundations but I'm here to tell you that I use so much less of this than I do of a regular foundation. I use this on a brush and it's like using a concealer because of how thick it is. So it's totally a cream, but it's absolutely gorgeous because you have to use so very little to get coverage. And boy, am I needing coverage lately. Between my melasma and my hyperpigmentation across my cheeks and across my, you know, right down here by my jowls, I am needing coverage like I've never needed before. So this to me has been such a perfecting foundation and great wear time again. I lately have been having to powder and spray things down a little bit, but that's okay as long as I get them to last. But this is just so perfecting and so pretty. And I would pick this one um, probably before I went out and picked up the house labs, but this would be a very, very close second. Now, I want to tell you that the e.l.f liquid poreless putty primer gets my check mark like five stars check mark whatever you want to say that this is fabulous this is so much like the tatcha one that i went gaga for like i don't know three or four years ago when it first came out it's still beautiful but this one is wow this one they did they did so good on it it really is just very perfecting and very lightweight. You know, the putty primer that you get in the pot from e.l.f., it's still wonderful, and I still like that one. But I like this one a little bit better because it is a little bit more light, and I don't have any problems with putting extra layers on. You know, sometimes as you're older and either you're menopause sweating or you got oil breakthrough or whatever it is, sometimes the extra layers can be a little bit of a problem or an issue. This putty primer is not an extra layer. It just blends so beautifully under foundation. Definitely gets my stamp of approval. And I didn't have another high-end one either, but I wanted to talk about the NYX Marshmallow Primer. I, this one came out like five years ago too, maybe four years ago. I don't remember when it was. And yes, this is too expensive for a drugstore primer. I get it. I don't know why these are so expensive, but it is. But my point is, is that I forgot how much I love this primer. This primer is so lightweight and it feels whipped. Now it does have a very strong marshmallow vanilla fragrance to it. So if you don't like fragrance, skip over it. But for me, this one plays so pretty underneath foundation that I fell in head over heels in love with it all over again. Now, the reason that I refound this, refound, the reason that I found this again is because they did release a spray, a setting spray that's the marshmallow one. And I'm still testing that out for you and it will be coming in a new drugstore makeup video. But yes, this again was my newfound love for this year. Now, as far as setting sprays go, I only have one, it's high end. It's the one that I've used all year long and I really haven't even reached for my Charlotte Tilbury and I love Charlotte Tilbury's setting spray. But this is the Max Fix Plus Stay Over Alcohol Free Long Lasting Setting Spray. This is fantastic. The sprayer doesn't spit at you. Gotta have a good sprayer all the time on all of my setting sprays. But what I love about it being alcohol free is because I am a dry gal in the winter and it doesn't dry me out more. When you need something that's working with menopause and working with the breakthrough that you kind of get through your T-zone, you need to have that little bit of, you know, set it down really good, but don't dry me out. Let's give me all of it. I want my cake and eat it too. And that's what this does. It's just a really, really good one. And I am in love with the original Max Fix Plus, but it is definitely a primer spray. But this one is so good. So good and I can highly recommend it and definitely loved it. This one is a Korean brand. This is a pink blur tone up uh, compact, it says packed. And it's a pink set, uh, setting powder. And it is, it's either a Japanese or a Korean setting powder, but it's this pink tone in here. And I really love it because it's super light, but it's super brightening. And if you have very fair skin, you know how important it is to not make you look more sallow. Uh, you need that brightness. And that's what this does. It's really very perfecting and very brightening. Now it is your typical powder, but it's very, very finely milled. And I love that about it. So 
I really recommend this one for a drugstore alternative. I know that it's sold on Amazon, but as far as the price point and the fact that it's such a pretty powder, definitely go for it if you've been looking for a new powder. NARS has this new powder as well this year, and I love this one too. This is called the Light Reflecting Setting Powder, and this is called Translucent Crystal. Now, what this has in it, and a lot of you are gonna go, ooh, I don't want anything like that, but it does have the super refined little teeny bit of glitter in it, but it is the lightest powder as far as, I mean, look, I just, I'll, okay, I'm gonna rub on this really hard. Look, it didn't hardly bring anything up. This is one of those powders that's super special because it feels like a no powder powder. So you can completely set your face down with it. It still gives that light ref reflecting property. I am so tongue tied today, I apologize. But at the same time, it is really a beautiful powder for keeping the makeup in place, but it is the most light and airy powder I have found all year. It's so pretty. I've used this every day since I got it about two months ago when it was released, two or three months ago, and it's not got a dent in it because it it's like you're not picking anything up. There's hardly anything there. Very special. This was the year of the concealers. I cannot believe, between mascaras and concealers, I cannot believe how many were released, but I narrowed them down for you. I have two high-end that are fantastic, and I have a drugstore. Let me tell you about the drugstore first. Koki released their full cover concealers like their foundation. Their foundation has been a hit with me for years. I love that full coverage because it is a really good amount of coverage without being cakey and heavy. And that's what this concealer is like. It's got the big doe foot applicator that we've come to know and love since Tarte came out with Shape Tape, but it definitely has the coverage and you can use just a tiny bit because it's so pigmented and get your coverage without it being cakey and creasy. And I love that about it. So this is a hit with me, absolutely. The two that I absolutely love from high end, I'll talk about the one that came in the place of number two, and that is the Natasha Denona, and I said this wrong when I originally talked about it. I called it, uh, I think I called it Hourglass. Natasha Denona's new concealer is so gorgeous. If you have mature skin, you've been wanting the perfect concealer that is not super full coverage. I would say that this is a medium coverage but you can put enough on that it will cover, no problem. But this is really, really creamy and really beautiful to blend out. This is one of those concealers that I felt like was just super special when I got it. This was actually the first one to come out and then they all hit the market at once after that, it was crazy. So I love the doe foot applicator on there. It actually does have a little hole in there so it's picking up a little bit more product, which I use a tiny bit of product anyway, but. This is so gorgeous. Yes, you do have to set concealer down, either with setting spray or powder. I have to. I have crinkles, I have wrinkles, and if I don't set it down, it's definitely going to crease on me. So keep that in mind. You're not in a league of your own if you can't find the perfect concealer. Now, the number one absolute gorgeous concealer that I found, Makeup by Mario. This is a medium weight concealer. Have it on today for my concealer and I have dark, nasty circles. It is medium weight, but it's super high pigmented, but it blends so gorgeous. It is perfecting. It is, it, I mean, I have troughs in my, you know, down here that are, I look like the Crypt Keeper most mornings, and this awakens my eyes, and it is so gorgeous. I have not found a concealer that I fell in love with as much as this one this year. Kosas was probably the last one that I fell so much in love with. I don't know how long how long ago that was. I was probably five years ago too. But this one is every bit as beautiful. Makeup by Mario does such beautiful makeup. But when he did this, I was so excited because I wasn't a huge fan of his foundation. But boy, I'm a huge fan of this concealer. It's not going to crease super badly if I choose not to put any powder on it. I just put a little bit of setting spray on there to set it down. I love this, I love this so much, and I really couldn't wait to tell you about it. Let's talk a little bronzer. Now, I am somebody that doesn't wear a lot of bronzer, 
but I love to contour. So I kind of combined the two and I'm always trying to find the perfect shade in between the two. I recently just found the Milani new one. This is her new, their new cream bronzers. And this is a great bronzer. It has a great consistency. It is just a little bit too warm for me though. And it can make me look a little bit too orange if I go crazy with it. So I wish that they, this is the fairest one. I think it's either a fair or light. I can't remember. I think there's three colors, but gorgeous. And I'm not kidding. This is just absolutely beautiful. It's one of those ones that you definitely can blend out without a problem. So gorgeous. I would say it's on par with this lady right here, which is a Charlotte Tilbury's cream bronzer. And when I open this up, you're going to see that I have a big old divot in there. And that's because this has been my go-to. Such an easy blend, huge pan. Now on this one, you're going to see the difference in what I'm talking about. This one from Milani is just a little bit more on the warm side. And then this one from Charlotte Tilbury, it's got just that little hint of cool tone in there. That little subtle gray, grayishness in there that just makes it look gorgeous on anybody that has cool tone skin. That is always the problem with me is not being able to find a bronzer that is that little bit on the cool tone. You don't want to have a bronzer that looks ashy, obviously, because you're warming up your face. But if you do want a bronzer that is absolutely fabulous and cream, everything's going to be practically cream for me this year, just so you know. From Kiko, this is their bronzer stick. I use this and use this and use this. This is a perfect bronzing shade, or no, I'm sorry, contour shade. It is so good. And I would always say with this one in particular, actually any stick or cream that you're using, I would always put it onto your brush, tap it into the palm of your hand, and then put it on your face. If I draw this, and I don't care whether it's the LYS that everybody's talking about or not, if I draw any of these on my face, I'm going to take away from my foundation that's already on there or, you know, not get a really good blend. I just am somebody that knows that you need to either warm it up somehow or put it on a brush and tap that brush out a little bit. But what a great color, right? Just so pretty. When you're wanting to chisel out those cheekbones or that jawline or take down that high forehead, this is gorgeous. And then a little bit of one of these other cream bronzers on top of it, you've got the perfect look as far as bronzer goes. All right, we're down to highlighter and blush. I only have a couple of highlighters for you. I do wanna to talk to you about the Laura Mercier product that just came out. Let me get the exact name because I do this every time. Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. Now this is a perfecting powder, not a setting powder. Why? Because it does have that luminosity in it. If you are to put that luminosity all over your face, it's gonna make you look greasy instead of perfecting your skin. I mean, there's places on my skin, I have large pores. If I put a luminous powder over those large pores, it's gonna show texture. They're gonna be bigger. But if I take this and I am very strategic about it, so if I go down my nose, or if I go across my cheeks, or if I go in right here on my marionette lines and brighten that up, because it's got a shadow, because it's a little sunken in, this is gonna brighten it up, just like that NARS powder does. But it's going to have that little bit of luminosity and have that little bit of light reflect that's so pretty. You can wear this across your eyelids and it'd be gorgeous. Even to take out the discoloration, you know, like swipe it across, one and done, a little bit of bronzer on your eyelids, you're done. This is beautiful. The powder itself is creamy, feels great. All right, let's talk a little highlighter. When I got this highlighter from Merit, and this color is very specific, it's called Kava. When I got this, I threw it to the side because I was like, I don't like that. It felt a little bit tacky and it didn't feel creamy. It just felt like it was, I don't know. It just, I, it, it didn't impress me. So I don't remember what I was doing, but maybe I was just swatching because I do that often. You know, I just go into my drawer and I start swatching and I happened to put my finger on it like this instead of using a brush. And I did that and then I just tapped it across my cheeks and I was like, Oh my gosh, all it did was give me this wet look across my cheeks, right? But you don't pick up a lot because the way that the stick is very firm, so you're not picking up a lot of product, but you're getting this little bit of this just wet look on your cheeks, like, oh, I just got out of the hot tub or, you know, have a little bit of a flush going, whatever. It just gives this subtle sheen on your cheeks. 
so pretty. And I was blown away by how gorgeous this is and really love it now and use it constantly. But I remembered that Flower Beauty's Day Glow, this is pretty much the same thing. I will say that this one is just a little bit more thick. So you have to be a little bit more careful with this one. So you're not gonna want to like put a brush down in there. I mean, use it on your fingers, maybe tap off your finger a little bit. And then same thing, you're gonna get that just little wet slick look across your cheek. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So these were my picks for highlighters this year. Now I have uh, five blush, five different blushes in front of me. I know all of you have heard a million times about the Rare Beauty blushes. These are a cult classic for a reason because she just did such a good job on these as far as their pigmentation. She picks out colors like nobody's business. I have a red one of these and I love it and I meant to bring it, but I didn't. And they're just, I mean, you need such a little bitty, bitty bit of color. So again, I would tell you, put this in the palm of your hand, then, you know, go ahead and put your brush on top of it and then go ahead and go on to your skin because such a tiny bit is so pigmented. These are absolutely incredible blushes. If you see a color that you like, grab it because you're not gonna be disappointed. You're gonna absolutely love it. So these are, yeah, these are so, so good. I just absolutely love them. But Moira also did a liquid blush. Now, I will tell you the difference between the Moira and the Rare Beauty is that Moira's are just a little bit thicker of a formula. That means that you're getting a little bit more pigment, if that's even possible, but they are truly just, just a little bit more on the side of you need even less than you do of the Rare Beauty, if that is even a thing. But they blend like a dream, just like the Rare Beauty does. They just blend so well. Do not put this right onto your face unless you're somebody that is really used to that because you're gonna, again, you're gonna disrupt your foundation or you're going to get too much on there and you're not gonna like it. They just have this high, high pigment, but the staying power I feel like with these from Moira is even more than they are from the Rare Beauty. And that's saying something because the Rare Beauty I can get to last all day, but I can get these to last all day, all night. You know, I'm going, 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 and these are the Energizer Bunny. They just keep on going. So I love these ones from Moira. They have great colors as well. Also, I discovered these blushes, cream blushes from Honest Beauty. And I kind of were thinking that these were gonna be a really good substitute for some of my favorites, which are from Fenty Beauty. Well, yes and no. They are almost the same price, but they have a, almost the exact same consistency as them. I do love the colors of these. This was the one that everybody was looking for. It's kind of a lilac-y color at there. This is a bubblegum pink one. So beautiful, I love how pigmented they are. I love how easily they blend out. If you're into cream a little bit more than that liquid that we just talked about, these are probably gonna be something that you'll really like. And I do really love all of the colors that I've gotten so far. They're just a great formula and they do blend like a dream. I bet you have this longer than you can use it before it dries up. And I, I've had mine for a long time and they haven't dried up or anything, but I bet you have them for a long time. Now, the very last one though, and again, Moira steals the show. I love these every bit as much as I love the Fenty and I love the Honest Beauty. They're so pretty. This one from Moira, it's almost, I, I couldn't tell the difference unless I actually was had the packaging with me. There's no way I could tell the difference. These are just gorgeous. Let me tell you, I should have told you the colors of the other ones. This one is called I Trust You. That's that one right there. The next one, let's just keep the glasses on. The next one is called I Miss You. Bubblegum pink again, I miss you. High pigment again, creamy, beautiful on mature skin again. <laughs> I like you. And these are just gorgeous. And I, you know, I'm the type of person once I find something that I love like this, I could buy all of them and just be a happy camper and move right along and yeah, we could do that all day long. But these are beautiful and they truly are on par with the higher end ones. Okay, I fib to you. That said that was my last one. This is not, this is my last one. One Size Beauty has these gorgeous trios of blushes. And the reason that I'm so enamored with these is because you have the cream, the powder, and the highlighter. 
you have a whole wardrobe here. This one particularly I wanted to get because I was really intrigued by again the bubble gum. That was kind of all the rage during the summer, right? But the cream on here, look how high look how high pigmented the cream on there is. And the powder, super soft, super pretty. But this down here, this highlighter one, it is almost a duochrome between a silver flip with the pink and a peach. I can, it's so pretty. And you can use that one just as a, you know, a blush, maybe do a little bit of powder over it because you wouldn't want it to be so disco ball on your cheek. But definitely this formula is so knock it out of the park gorgeous. And yeah, I'm looking into getting some more colors of these because I thought this was just really special too. So I'm all pinked up. I'm all ready to go and need to have a major makeup uh, cleansing here, but I hope that you did enjoy seeing all of these face products. If you have anything that you've tried throughout the year that you have just absolutely fallen in love with, let me know. I appreciate you being with me till the end of this video. Love you so much. And I also want to announce that I'm going to have a giveaway really soon. So don't miss one video because I'll be sneaky and I'll put it in there somewhere. We'll have a video up pretty soon, probably before the end of the year. That is a giveaway video. So I hope you're all doing well. Love you so very much. See you in my next video. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.